For me, I really like free furniture. It's free. A big lump with knobs. It has the wood. I can tell you all about it. I mean, look at this thing. I can't imagine a more beautiful thing. I selected this chest of drawers to refinish for the Ugly Duckling Challenge hosted by Corey at Desert DIY. I would say this piece looks like your average vintage dresser, but the wear and tear on the piece and the opaque finish isn't really adding to the resale value. The finish isn't in terrible condition, but I do want to try to use my carbide scraper to see how easily it comes off. This is going to give me a better idea on the finish, and it looks like it's a tinted lacquer. I decided based on the scraper's performance that the finish was relatively thick, so I decided to use a stripper to remove it instead. I'm using Stripwell's QCS Vintage Finish Remover, and I'll link their website below along with all the products used in this video if you're interested. While the stripper is marinating on the dresser, the damaged fluting on the front drawers needs to be removed. I'm using a chisel to just wedge under the veneer and pop it off the fronts. Fluting is very popular for furniture right now and probably when this dresser was also manufactured. But these are really damaged and the effort to save them would have been quite a lot. However, I am thinking of replacing them with something similar. After applying two coats of the stripper, I used my metal scraper to remove the finish. You can see that it was tinted, and once it's removed, there's actually some really beautiful cherry veneer underneath it. Some of the finish was sticking to the surface, so I poured some of the stripper onto 4 aught steel wool, and then I scrubbed the remaining finish off. There were two aluminum leg caps on the front legs. These are typically held on by a single nail that holds them into place. If you come across these type of feet and the smaller nail doesn't hold the feet on, I don't recommend gluing them on. Just change the direction so that the nail goes into a different part of the feet. Since the QCS stripper is a liquid, I find that when possible, it's best to lay the surface flat that you're trying to remove the finish from. This gives the product more time to sit in higher concentrations on the surface. The bottom side of the dresser had a lot of loose veneer. And when possible, I like to make these repairs before I try to remove the finish. Just use some wood glue and a glue syringe and then fill in between the surfaces.
I clamped the veneer down using a piece of plywood with painter's tape on it to keep it from sticking to the veneer if the wood glue seeps out. If you've filled between the surfaces well, you should be seeing nice, even glue squeeze out. I like to think of it like a perfect grilled cheese sandwich where the cheese is evenly distributed between the two slices of bread. The carbide scraper is also a useful tool for removing excess glue. There's a lot of overall discoloration on the veneer, especially the top. And before I try to tackle those stains, I wanna make sure that my substrate is even. So I sanded the entire piece down using 150 grit sandpaper. To try to remove the stains, I'm going to use oxalic acid. I applied it all over the dresser as there were several spots on the piece that didn't sand out that were stained. I honestly don't think that some of these spots were water stains and they look more like oil stains, but the treatment did help to lessen the splotchiness of the wood. I wiped the piece down with water several times to remove that oxalic acid and to check the stains i'm just applying some mineral spirits while they're still present they definitely are not as visible and they can be blended into the wood Next, I want to tackle the drawer fronts that have the fluting on them. I am going to apply new veneer and I want to seal them first since it is raw wood. For this, I'm just going to use some shellac since it dries relatively quickly. The veneer on this dresser is cherry, so my first thought was to use cherry edge banding to replace the fluted veneer. This idea changed, however, when I was rating my edge banding stash. I had walnut and mahogany edge banding in the same size. If I just placed the cherry edge banding side by side, it looked really flat. I could have spaced them out a bit, but I still felt that it looked really flat. I played around with patterns a bit before I settled on using a piece of cherry edge banding between alternating walnut and mahogany veneers. This is iron-on edge banding, and before I ironed it into place, for the first set I used CA glue to temporarily hold them into place on the surface and attached a few pieces before I ironed them on. Thank you. 
there are many ways to create a fluted look on a piece, such as popsicle sticks, trim boards, and even fluted panels that can be cut to size. So if you're looking to create that look, you have many different options available to you. This is just one method that I used, and these are the pieces that I had on hand. When I cut the edge banding, I did cut it oversized, just in case the piece shifted while it was being applied. To fix that, all I did was use a sharp chisel to trim up the edges. Since this is mostly cherry, I wanted to try to keep it as close to natural as possible. Cherry generally doesn't stain easily, so I'm going to apply a base coat of shellac to start. This will give me a better idea of what the overall color will look like, and then I can decide what I want to do next. I did apply some wood filler between the edge banding in a few areas that had gaps, and the shellac made these stand out, so I'm going to use some stain markers to change and touch up the color. The color of the piece, I just wasn't really happy with it, so I ended up using some medium walnut toner and went over the piece. I applied four coats of lacquer to the surface of the dresser to seal everything in. The hardware on this piece is going to be changed to black, which meant that the feet also needed to be black. I used Krylon matte black spray paint, applied two coats, and then sealed it with a flat clear coat. Pieces tend to get dusty on the inside even after a good initial cleaning, so I wiped the entire inside down and drawers using Murphy's oil soap. Once it's cleaned, I applied wax to the raw wood surfaces and especially the drawer sliders. This is going to help the drawers slide in and out better. I didn't remove the drawer liners until I was getting to the very end of the project. I did this because they were protecting the drawer bottoms as I was working on the piece. And when I finally did remove the drawer liners, I was pretty shocked that there was a maker stamp on the drawer bottom. I finished this dresser while preparing for Hurricane Ian, and while the impacts were minimal to the area that I live in, 
they were catastrophic for others. If you would like to donate to help those impacted, the Florida Disaster Fund is currently allowing tax-deductible donations to be made directly to those affected by Hurricane Ian. I hope you enjoyed watching this transformation and be sure to check out the other Ugly Duckling projects in the playlist link below. Thanks for watching.